Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Dr. Jimmy Henning. He's with the University of Kentucky Extension Forage Specialist there. What would be some of the benefits of maybe exploring baleage? You know, I, I'm going to say right off the bat, the biggest benefit to me as a forage agronomist is that people can more likely get their forage cut on time uh, because we only have to have a couple of days to get it wilted. We don't have to cure it down to dry hay moisture. So it lets us get a first cutting off uh, somewhat in, at the right time. When do we need to start thinking about baleage? Uh, obviously, there's some pieces you want to kind of put together. Uh, you need to find, you know, make sure you get your good plastic lined up. You've got your equipment lined up, whether you're doing it or whether you're contracting with someone. But if, if I was doing it for you and, and I'd want to know then, when do you really expect this crop to come off? If we're talking about rye, cereal rye, uh, it needs it's the first to come off. It's going to be an April event to do it well. Uh, you know, wheat's a little more forgiving a little later in the window, triticale somewhere in the middle. But, you know, I'd want to know when are you going to be doing this? Uh, and for, for the most part, somewhere in that late April, early May is going to be ideal. And it's ideal for us with baleage because that early cut forage has a lot of carbohydrates, soluble carbs, that are going to ferment well. Of course, in fact, you know, if it's low quality, uh, putting plastic around it doesn't change that quality at all. Although I will tell you, I think that if we get it to ferment, that it actually tastes good to animals. And so maybe there's a bump in how much they will eat, but it's, it's still kind of that same forage that you put into that bale. So ideally, you'd really want to, you know, think about making baleage first, dry hay later, not baleage after you couldn't get it harvested as dry hay because typically your quality is, is going to be down quite a bit. Yeah, and we probably shouldn't make those assumptions. Probably be great to get that, that baleage tested to make sure we know exactly what the total digestible nutrients are, the protein, the energy. One of the things we've discovered because we have been testing a lot more of our baleage is that we do get a bump in quality because in general we're harvesting earlier but another thing that we've learned a lot about is the fermentation that goes on within that bale. And, and, and when you want a bale to ferment well, it, it really ties directly back to the moisture content of that baleage when you bale it. And as we've found out by looking at a lot of farmer samples in Kentucky, getting that moisture right is, is not easy. And it's still important, even though, you know, when we're thinking about dry hay, we're thinking about getting that moisture down to be able to roll that. It's still important with baleage. You can't just roll it completely wet. No, and your equipment won't handle it typically. Uh, and one of the things that we've tried to do is try to characterize how long does it have to wilt before you're ready to go. Now, in, in May, uh, if, we've, if we've had a good bit of rain and the soil's kind of damp and you've got a heavy crop like wheat, uh, then it's going to take two or three days to, you know, so we're, but we're beginning to be able to tell you when that is and how fast that is. The good news is that there's a lot of forgiveness in everything but the very wettest stuff. So just let it wilt a little bit. If it's an early spring and you're wondering two to three days, I'll let it go to three days, unless it's, we've had a drought and it's just hotter than blue blazes. Do we have that target moisture? We do. We want it to be, the, the book says it's 40 to 60% moisture. We know that things work a little better when it's more than 50% moisture. Uh, we know that the wheels kind of come off when it's 70% moisture, but that's, that's almost too heavy to handle. So, you know, a good wilt is going to drop that forage down to the 50 to 60% moisture pretty quickly. And if people are wanting more information, are there resources that we have available at the university? Yes, there are. There are a couple of them. One of them, I'd say, is, is the general one on Bailey uh, making round bale silage, uh, and that's AGR 173, uh, if you're really writing stuff down. The other one is uh, just look up Bailey frequently asked questions, and it will walk you through, you know, those things that people ask us most often about making Bailey. So both of those are are really, really helpful publications. All right. Well, certainly appreciate the information. And if you have questions, make sure to contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day.